Hey everyone, welcome to part 23 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video, we will implement move accuracy based on which we will determine whether a move will hit or miss. And we will also implement moves that can boost the accuracy and evasion levels of the Pokemon. And finally, we will also implement secondary effects of move. So for example, a move like Ember has 10% chance for causing burn. So we'll try and implement that. Special thanks to all my Patreons for making the series possible. By becoming a Patreon, you can support me in the making of the series and get some cool rewards like access to the complete project files of the series. So let's start the video. Okay, so right now, a move used by a Pokemon always hits the target. But sometimes we want the move to be missed, right? So inside the run move function, we will check if a move hits or misses based on its accuracy. So if you look inside the move base class, you can see that we have a variable for accuracy, but we are not using it anywhere right now. So inside my battle system script, I'll create a new function called check if move hits. So this function is going to return a boolean. And it will take a reference to the move, the source Pokemon that performed the move, and it will also take the target Pokemon. Alright. So, in here, we just have to check if a random number generated between 1 and 100 is less than or equal to the move accuracy. So, first, let me store the move accuracy into a variable. And then I'll generate a random number. And if that number is less than or equal to the move accuracy, it means the move will hit. Otherwise, the move will miss. So we can just return the output of this condition. Right? So most of the moves like Tackle, Scratch, Ember, etc. have an accuracy of 100. So in the normal case, those moves will never miss. But the move accuracy can also be boosted by two other factors. They can be boosted by the accuracy of the source Pokemon or the evasion of the target Pokemon. So inside our Pokemon class, we have a stat boost dictionary that keeps track of the levels by which each of the stats are raised or lowered. So to the stat boost dictionary, we should also add accuracy and evasion so that we can keep track of that. So first inside my stat enum, I'll add accuracy and evasion. So let me just add a comment here saying that these two are not actual stats. Okay, so back in our Pokemon class, when initializing the stat boost dictionary, we should also initialize accuracy and evasion okay so now moves can also raise the level of accuracy and evasion so moves like sand attack can lower the accuracy of the opponent so now inside our check if move hits function we need to boost the move accuracy based on the accuracy level of the source pokemon and the evasion level of the target pokemon so let's actually store them into variables. Okay, so now we can use these values to boost the move accuracy. So, th so the logic to boost the move accuracy is pretty similar to how we boost other stats, but the boost values are different in case of move accuracy. So this is the boost values used for boosting the move accuracy. And now if accuracy is greater than zero, which means it's raised, then we need to increase the move accuracy, right? So I'll multiply the move accuracy with the boost value of our accuracy level. So I can get that by boost values of accuracy. 
and otherwise if the accuracy is less than zero then we should actually reduce the MOO accuracy so I'll divide the MOO accuracy by the Bose value okay so in this case we also have to negate the accuracy level okay so next we need to do the same for the evasion but it's the opposite right so if the evasion is raised then we should lower the MOO accuracy and vice versa so let me just copy the logic of the accuracy and I'll use multiple cursors to change accuracy to evasion so if it's greater than zero then I'll divide to reduce the new accuracy and if it's less than zero then I'll multiply all right so we're done with the logic for boosting the MOO accuracy based on the accuracy and evasion levels of the Pokemon so next I want to add one more thing to this so there are some moves that never miss so for those moves we don't have to check all this we just have to return true so inside of a move based class below the accuracy I'll also add a boolean called always hits so if this is true then the move will always hit so let me also create a property for this okay so now inside our check if move hits function if always hits is true then we can just return true and we don't have to check anything else all right so now inside our run move function we should check if the move hits or misses before executing all this right so I'll say if check move hits so we need to pass the move the source Pokemon and the target Pokemon and if the move actually hits then we need to execute all this code right and otherwise if the move missed then we can just show a dialog like the Pokemon's move missed all right so let's go ahead and test if this is working so right now all our moves have accuracy of 100 and yeah actually most of the moves have an accuracy of 100 but some moves like sing they have a lower accuracy so sing has an accuracy of 55 right so it should really hit 55 percentage of the time so let's actually test that so I'll just make the first Pokemon in my party Jigglypuff so that I can test this easily okay so let me try testing so let me try using sing multiple times and sometimes it should miss so yeah you can see our move was missed in this turn so basically it will only hit 55 percentage of the time but if you test moves like tackle it will always hit since it's accuracy is 100 percentage and the only way moves with 100 percentage accuracy will miss is if we lower the accuracy level or increase the evasion level by using a move so let's also test that so I'll try creating a move like sand attack that lowers the accuracy level so let me just duplicate crowd and I'll rename it to sand attack okay so let me also change the name and sand attack should lower the accuracy of the foe instead of lowering the attack right so let me assign sand attack to some Pokemon I'll attach it to Pidgey okay and I'll make Pidgey the first Pokemon in our party alright so let's test the game 
and let me start a battle real quick okay so if I use sand attack two to three times then there is a high chance that Bulbasaur is going to start missing all its moves so let's try that and yeah Bulbasaur actually missed his attack this move so let's try again so now it's minus 3 and you can see that Bulbasaur is going to start missing most of its attack so yeah accuracy and evasion is working correctly alright so next let's implement secondary effects of Mo. so some moves might have secondary effects for example a move like Ember has 10% chance to cause burn right so we can easily implement that since we have already encapsulated the logic of movefx into run movefx function all right so in our move base we have a class called movefx which we can use to specify all the effects that can be caused by a move so we can use this class for secondary effects also but but we need some extra fields so what I'll do is I'll create another class called secondary effects and I'll inherit from the move effects class so secondary effects will have all these values inside it right and we need some extra fields in secondary effects so I'll create an integer called chance so this will specify the chance for causing the secondary effects so for a move like ember it will be 10 since there is 10 percentage of chance to cause the burn right so another thing that we need is a target so secondary effects can be on a different target right so there might be powerful moves that can cause damage to the enemy but can cause some secondary effects on the attacker itself right so I'll define a variable for the target and let's create properties to expose these okay so now inside of a move base class we also need a variable to store the secondary effects so since a move can have multiple secondary effects I'll just use a list here and I'll call it secondary effects alright so we also need a property to expose it All right. So now inside our battle system, inside the run move function, I'll also add the logic to run secondary effects. So first I'll check if secondary effects is not equal to null. And the list should at least have one element. So I'll check if the count is greater than zero. So let me just rename secondary effects to secondaries to keep things short. Alright, I'll also rename the variable over here. Okay, so that's much more short. So next, we only need to run the secondary effects if the Pokemon hasn't fainted, right? So I'll also check if target Pokemon dot HP is greater than zero okay so if all these conditions are true then we should run the secondary effects one by one so I'll use a for each loop to loop through all the secondary effects and inside the loop we should only run the secondary effects if a random number generated between 100 falls under the chance of the secondary effect so first I'll generate a random number between 1 and 100 
and then if the random number is less than or equal to secondary dot chance then we should run the secondary fx right so to run that all we have to do is call our run more fx function so i'll just copy that and this time for the fx instead of passing the move i'll actually pass secondary so we have an array here so that's because right now run move fx takes move as the first parameter right so instead we should take move fx and i'll also change the name of this parameter to fx all right so we don't need this line here and we are using the move to get the target right so now since we are not taking the move we can create another parameter to get the target of the move okay so here i'll use move target So now when calling the run move fx function we also need to pass the target so in case of secondary i'll just pass secondary dot target and in case of a normal status move i'll just pass move dot base dot target okay and for the first parameter we can't simply pass move. We have to pass move dot base dot fx. All right. So now we can use run move fx to run the normal fx of a status move and also the secondary fx. All right. So now let's actually test this. So I'll add a secondary effect to Ember. All right. So secondary fx is not shown over here. So if we go into our move base, you can see that we have not added system.serializable on top of secondary fx. So let's add that and and then it should be shown in the inspector. Okay, so let me go back to Unity. And now we can see that we have secondaries in the inspector. So Ember should have a 10% chance to burn the opponent. So for the secondary effect, I'll change the status to burn. And for the chance, I'll say 10. Actually, I'll just change the chance to 50 for now, because it will be hard to test if there is only 10% of chance. So let's test this now and I'll change it back to 10 later. So before I test, I need to make Charmander the first Pokemon in my party. Alright, and for the enemy, I'll choose some other Pokemon other than Bulbasaur so that it won't faint when I use Ember. So let me use Pikachu and let me just change the level to 7. So now let's test if secondary effects are working. Okay, so let me try using Ember. Yeah, and you can see that Pikachu has been burned. And it should only happen 50% of the time. So we can actually verify that by changing the chance back to 10. And, and burn will not be caused most of the time because chance is very low. Right, so let me start a battle and now when I use Ember you can see that it doesn't cause burn since the chance is very low so awesome we have implemented secondary effects of move so I'll stop the video here if you think this video is helpful please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing to my channel to help it grow so I'll see you in the next video